we're moving. We're moving. Why did the world can change me? Why did the world can me? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Lilani of Barbados. Sorry I've been offline for a bit, but we're moving. We're moving house. And apparently that's one of the most stressful things you can ever do in life is like move house. So I'm going to document it. So tell me if you want me to put a video up of moving house from here to there and what it's like here in Jersey to move house. So Prince Andrew was served with a lawsuit filed by an American woman who accuses him of oh no. Oh no, no, underage. No, no, no. SA. During the time, she was also being abused by his friend Jeffrey Epstein, a new court filing revealed on Friday. And Jeffrey Epstein has passed away um, due to unnatural circumstances in prison. And I think you all know about that. So Andrew, who's Duke of York, was served with the civil suit filed by Virginia Giffray on August 27th in England, according to that filing in Manhattan Federal Court. The document and affidavit by a process server engaged by Gaffrey's legal team says the suit was left in with a police officer on duty at the gates of the Royal Lodge at Windsor in Windsor um, a property occupied by Andrew so as you know he's at Balmoral Castle but I said in a couple of videos ago that I thought that there'd be somebody in his circle that might get served instead of him but it has to be served in person so there you go it's a police officer on duty and the police officer told the attorneys that security there had been instructed not to allow anyone. Prince Andrew <laughs> denies ever meeting this woman completely. And here he is in a picture with her, which I keep showing. Um, and the madame there on the right is the woman who would collect these, these girls. I just want to talk about something for a minute. I know that people of this financial standing like um, Epstein and Harvey Weinstein and like the whole of them, I know that they have certain things that they can easily fulfill like at the drop of a hat. But why are you collecting young girls? Like that to me just sounds like a very exotic fetish. Like you can do a lot of things. You can get probably porn stars or like people who are in this industry but to get young underage girls and i'm not sure what makes these girls and i'm circling her face here what makes these girls feel like that's an like an appropriate thing to do at their age and they don't have any fear i guess they're very brave they don't have any fear of doing that but they go off to these islands and these secret locations to please these men and then like a few hundred years later they're like wait a minute that wasn't right what happened to me. And I mean that fair enough, you know, fair enough. And I'm just, I'm just looking at it like they may, may have taken that time to figure out what happened to them. As Oprah would say, what happened to you? What happened to me? Anyway, but the men involved, including, <laughs> you know, anyway, the ex-president of the United States were all there thinking this is fine. These girls look like 14, but it seems fine, you know. So they had the understanding at that and the maturity at that time to say, like, this is not right. She says, I'm holding Prince Andrew accountable for what he did to me. So if he doesn't respond to it, he'll be held liable by default, unless the courts in London agree to those terms and then hold him accountable. And then he has to pay out the money for damages to Virginia Griffey. Money. He has to pay money. To her um, from England and then he settles that and then he can travel back and forth in the United States I don't think he can unless he does that but it might not be an issue for him I don't know they should blackball the whole family really I mean <laughs> you know <laughs> because as it stands right now if he's with the Queen they can't arrest him they can't hold him for any crime if he's standing with the Queen walking with her so i think if he doesn't respond to this they should probably just hold everybody accountable i mean that does happen where they can blackball the entire family in a criminal case so i don't see why they can't do it here i mean if they're really that serious 
it's a very sad situation. I don't know how much she actually did on that evening or those evenings that she's referring to. I am just saying I'm not I'm not discounting what happened to her. I absolutely am not doing that. She's right there with him. I am definitely not discounting anything she's saying. I'm just saying, will she please speak more about what exactly happened? And can he answer to that and say exactly what happened? So we can make our own judgment on it. Because um, these are the people's people. That's their lot in life. So we really need to know what's really going on. Um, there's this other article off the back of that. The queen is allowing Andrew to keep his titles and people are saying that it's a huge risk, including the armed forces are saying it's a huge risk because as a public figure, he's not able to perform his duties while he has stepped back from rural life due to these allegations. People are speculating as to whether Harry, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm trying to watch this. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm trying to watch this movie, this Lifetime movie on my VPN here about Harry's, well, the, it's called Escaping the Palace and I'm trying to take it seriously. And I'm also trying to take this seriously, but it's very difficult because this is a joke. Harry has made a complete joke and arse of himself. It's crazy. So he's gonna get upset because Prince Andrew gets to keep his medals Prince Harry doesn't get to keep his medals, although the best time in his life was when he served in the military for the United Kingdom. And there's this guy that did this um, re reveal, reaction, reveal, that he had a bubble around him when he served and it was really just a performative thing. You know, I, That's what I got from the video. That was my takeaway. That it was a performative thing and he was really kept safe and the whole thing was just to show that he's there. He's participating, but he was never in any danger like the rest of the military. So anyway, I'm gonna just jump right in now. I'm sorry that, I, I'm sorry. I'm moving, my head is like all over the place. I'm thinking about drawers I have to clean up. I'm thinking about all kinds of different things. But anyway, you'll see the whole process. I will document it. Now I wanna tell you right up front so that you don't, I mean, spoiler alert, this is not for the UK audience. This is definitely for the American audience. They have portrayed her as a very innocent, very worried looking, very struggling looking person up inside this royal palace. And it's definitely geared towards feeling sorry for her. I mean, even if you read Harry and Meghan escaping the palace explores what really happened inside the palace that drove Harry and Meghan to leave everything behind in order to make a future for themselves and their son, Archie. The movie will detail Meghan's growing isolation and sadness. Their disappointment that the firm was not defending them against the press as attacks and Harry's fear that history would repeat itself. For no fucking reason, dude. No reason. The history repeat itself and he would not be able to protect his wife and son from the same forces that may have contributed to his mother's untimely death. Harry and Meghan escaping the palace will examine the dynamics between Will and Harry, Kate and Meghan, and Harry with Will and Charles that led to the ultimate break from the royal ties. Harry and Meghan escaping the palace is executively produced by Meredith Finn and... Me okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> The intro is him actually having a dream where he thinks that Meghan is Princess Diana caught in the car crash in the tunnel in Paris and he's trying to get her out and she's trying to call for him for help and that's the intro. So at that point, you realize what's really going on here. It, it cuts then to the bedroom where he wakes up um, to baby Archie crying and Megan comes in saying, you've been having a lot of bad dreams, which seems like gaslighting, like telling him, anyway, to, uh, depends on what side you're on. It could be gaslighting, but it could also be like, oh, Megan was so concerned and she documented how much he's been having bad dreams and so this is what really happened. So he's having these bad dreams and she tells him you've been having too many bad dreams. He has a house decorated with balloons, although they're, they're, they're in England for Mother's Day. So it's a Mother's Day celebration that he's had decorated and that's quite vague as to how this 
Santa Claus figure of the night, like decorated the place. By the way, I'm narrating this because I don't want to get claimed. I don't want to get claimed today. No copyright claims today. No. Oh. I said no. Uh, uh. How are you hosting? <laughs> Again. It's not ITV, it's Lifetime, but I don't trust none of you people. I don't trust none of you peoples anymore. Okay, so in England, the Mother's Day is normally in March. It's a Sunday in March. And in the United States, the Mother's Day is in May. So he apparently surprises her by celebrating. It's just so convoluted. Like, I'm already tired. I'm already tired. But I can do this. I can do it. She asked if the dogs had anything to do with the Santa Claus in the night decorations. Um, you know the one of the dogs didn't make it to the United States. She like rehomed it, pawned it off on somebody else. The mongrel dog, but she kept the full breed one and she brought it to the United States and that's where you see the full breed one in the corner um, of her, her video spoof goof that she did. Why you gotta get rid of the mongrel rescue dog though? <laughs> And then Doria is there. Doria comes out and she's just being nanny. She's like, you know, backstage left or whatever. And Sir Briggs, whoever he is, he's palace staff anyway, brings an iPad with the monkey picture. So it's like that picture that says, you know, Royal Baby Leaves Hospital. So because she refused to show those snapshots that everybody in the United Kingdom is used to seeing of a new member of the royal family leaving the hospital, people started to get annoyed and the press got a little bit mean and they put this picture and I didn't, <laughs> so I'm not laughing. I'm not, I'm laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. They put a whole monkey in a suit and a hat and a cane, like walking out of the hospital. <laughs> like, I don't know how I would feel. I feel like I would laugh. Like if that was me, I would laugh and I'd be like, this is so funny. But also I'm an asshole because I didn't actually like show my child, which is what everyone wanted to see. <laughs> and can we talk about Harry's hair and like the bottle dye that they're using. That's what he used for sure. And I think he did it himself. So I'm thinking the production, you know me and production, I'm thinking it's not a high budget one because that is so bad and his beard looks so bad. And I don't know, just the whole, the whole setup is really bad. <laughs> when will it st oh, by the way, her diction, her diction is so on point, like everything she's saying and how she's saying it is, is, it's really good. Like, I think that that's exactly how Megan talks and I don't know how she studied that, but that's amazing. Oh, I guess she watched Suits. Nobody watches it. I keep saying this, nobody watches it. How does she know how to talk like Megan? But yeah, it's very believable. So he's saying that he needs a statement. Harry wants a statement from Buckingham Palace about that. <laughs> About the fucking monkey. And the, Sir Briggs is basically saying like, you know, Prince William is right, said it's nonsense, let it go. There's not gonna be like a big drama official like statement. There's not gonna be a big theatrical monologue from the palace because Prince William has already stated that it's nonsense. And that's what Sir Briggs is saying. Okay, a direct shot at her son and she says it's hate speech. She's already gone all the way there. So, I'm not minimizing the way that made her feel. I'm really not. And I don't know how she could feel in that moment with hormones and everything like that. But hate speech? It's not speech, it's a meme. I don't think a meme can be hate speech, but whatever. I know it's lifetime. I know. But this William and Catherine are not even similar in any way, shape or form <laughs> to the real deal. And I just can't believe it. 
they go and visit Archie. Oh, the cousin thing. Oh, would they love to meet their new cousins? Oh, cousin and cousin and cousin. I'm so over it. Protect your children. Do what you have to do. Children don't have to meet nobody. He's so, like, honestly, you, well, we all know that Harry has shown himself to be a very petty man at this point. We all know that. Maybe didn't know it before. We thought he was very happy-go-lucky, but now we know that he's very petty. The children at tennis. If they're at tennis lessons, they're at tennis lessons. Why do they have to come and meet a squidgy little newborn? What is that for them? All right, I'm gonna have to stop this at this point. I'm so sorry, guys, but he's going on and on about racism in the press. I'm sorry, like. Harder than I thought it would be but she did not experience racism here okay really no one even knew what she was because she looked white nobody cared okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna power through this last segment about what he's saying about the press and the racism it's all for the this is to tell the American people that this is what happened in England when it didn't happen. It's rewriting history. This is actually not what happened, but this is making it sound like if there was this huge civil rights movement on behalf of Meghan Markle, a woman who looks like at the very most an Italian. Yes, it would be undig Yes, it would be undignified for you to defend yourself because you don't have dignity. You don't come across dignified. But she feels silenced. Because nobody can trust you to talk normally, like a normal person, like a polite person. You don't have the skill to do that. So that's why. Anyway, they're inside the nursery. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to have to do this in segments. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I could just watch the whole thing and talk to you about it. I can't do that. It's too much. It's every detail because it's such a propaganda movie already. And we're six minutes in, seven minutes in seven minutes and 40 seconds in, and we can already see that this is a complete propaganda. But I'm gonna touch on, in my future videos, the things that, sorry. See, there goes my battery telling me stop, stop rambling. But I'm gonna touch in the future on things I know on the inside and also on the outside and things that I was here for. And so I'm going to have a good take on this, but this right now is literally like a North Korean propaganda <laughs> pamphlet right now catering to the American audience anyway thank you so much I'm going to go through this trust me and I hope you like this video like I said we're moving so I'm trying to do as much as I can in the midst of all the confusion and chaos but I'm hanging in there and don't worry ITV or nobody will break my spirit they won't they can try try their best but I'm back so thank you so much for watching me and thank you so much for all your comments and I'm getting back to all of you and please subscribe and press the bell notifications if you have not seen my big head face ever before okay <laughs> okay thank you so much thank you bye